Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about infrastructure deals. We are all aware of Belt and Road Initiative. China has been making infrastructure deals around the world and they've been building infrastructure in a lot of the developing world. Now in this video I want to go over the G7's infrastructure deal, EU's infrastructure deal and of course the US alternative to China's Belt and Road Initiative. I will also discuss how this would affect Africa in particular. And I will also try to analyze who should be Africa's main infrastructure partner in the future now that there are more options. Now, first, I will show you a video of different infrastructure deals so you know what's going on. But before I do that, please do remember to subscribe, like, share and comment. Today, we officially launched the Partnership for Global Infrastructure and Investment. We collectively have dozens of projects already underway around the globe. And I'm proud to announce the United States will mobilize $200 billion in public and private capital over the next five years for that partnership. We're here today because we're making this commitment together as a G7 in coordination with one another to maximize the impact of our work. Collectively, we aim to mobilize nearly $600 billion. That's the news from yesterday. G7 announced that they would be spending $600 billion on infrastructure. Now let me show you what the Europeans have been doing. This news is a couple months old. Dubbed the Global Gateway, it's intended to advance the infrastructure in emerging and developing countries. The EU plans to invest up to 300 billion euros in the development of modern infrastructure over the next six years. The project is a key initiative in the EU's competition with China and is intended as an alternative to the Chinese Silk Road for many partner countries. China, on the other hand, is investing almost a trillion euros in its new Silk Road initiative, more than three times as much as the EU. They know we are transparent. They know it is accompanied by good governance. They know there will be no unsustainable debt levels as a leftover. Also, that the local communities really benefit from the added value of infrastructure investment. And um, we bring on top the private, uh, uh, the private sector with us, a private sector that in such a way does not exist in China. If we go over this, EU said that they would be spending 300 billion on global infrastructure projects. US said that they will be spending 200 billion and collectively the G7 is going to spend 600 billion. Now, I don't know. Are those all just added together and the combined EU and US investment is 600 billion? Or is this 600 billion that G7 is spending different than 300 billion that EU will spend? Now, before we get into this, I first just have to say that I do find it a bit funny Europeans and their cousins in America are doing now exactly what China has been doing. But years. They've been saying that China is laying down debt traps. They've been saying that what China is doing, you know, building infrastructure in, on the continent and in Latin America, in Italy, because it's not just in Africa. China has been building infrastructure in many European countries. They just never mention it. Italy is part of the Belt and Road Initiative. But they used to say that this is a terrible thing. It's a problem. And now they're doing exactly the same thing. So... If it's so bad, if it's a debt trap and if it's form of colonization, why are you doing it? Or were you lying the whole time? Now, we all know what the answer is to that. Now, this is not the first time that the Europeans and the Americans have announced something like that. Biden announced a couple of years ago that he would do something like this and they've never done it. And the reason is simple, because what they never tell you is that a lot of the infrastructure projects are won by bidding. Even on the continent, most of the African countries, when they have to build something, they go through a bidding process. And majority of the time, China is the overwhelming winner because of a simple reason. They just do things cheaper, quicker, and they usually have a better quality to their products. Now, if you want, you can read about the bidding projects. For example, there were the Moroccan rail lines. There was French companies. There were German companies. There were many European companies who tried to bid. And there were also Chinese companies. But in the end, China won because they did things cheap as a country. 
there are three things that usually matter. Now, firstly, of course, is the price and the quality of the product. But secondly, a lot of African countries, a lot of Latin American countries, countries around the world, it's not just about building an infrastructure, it's also about gaining knowledge. And some countries have done this better than others. For example, Tanzania has been, in my opinion, quite successful at this. So it's about transfer of knowledge. Now, the way this is done is by employing the local people and by having local companies be a partner in the project. And of course, the third thing is about gaining employment. Now, certain countries do better deals than others. Certain countries, for example, demand that over 90% of the people who are employed are local people. They demand that local businesses participate. Of course, there are some leaders who just want quick results. For example, they want to have a football stadium in a couple of months because there's an election. Well, then they'll make a bad deal. But generally, those are the things that matter. Now, in my personal opinion, we should always do what is best for us. And unfortunately, many of the countries on the continent, they still need partners in building major infrastructure. Every country should take the best deal that they can get. So I have no problem with doing business with any country, as long as it benefits the local people, as long as it creates employment, as long as there's a knowledge transfer and transfer of technology, and as long as the result is that after a while, it will be the local companies that actually build infrastructure instead of always resorting to foreigners to do it. But having said that, I believe that, as I said before, China is still going to keep winning. Firstly, they are investing way more money into this, and secondly, they just do things cheaper. And also, I think that every African country, every country around the globe who participates in European and Western projects, they have to be very careful because China doesn't politicize Belt and Road initiatives. And this is what the Western countries don't get, that you can buy services from China without China intervening in your local affairs. But Western countries, they cannot differentiate between trade and between politics and between intervening in political affairs. Everything is a weapon to them. So this will also become a weapon to them. And we have examples for this. For example, Ethiopia has a lot of projects going on with Europe. But then European countries, they slashed all of those projects and they sanctioned Ethiopia. And that's something that has to be taken into consideration. We should never rely on US or Europe because if you rely on them, they will weaponize these deals and it might be that you have a major infrastructure project in the middle going on, something happens, boom, you are sanctioned, and now you have an infrastructure project that you cannot finish. That is too risky. China doesn't do that. I'm not saying that China is perfect, but they just don't do that. And also, even if you make deals with Europeans and their cousins in America, we should always still keep China as the main partner. And the reason for this is simple, because these people are not doing this because they want to build infrastructure globally. They don't want to build infrastructure in Afghanistan, Iraq, Somalia, Kenya, wherever. They just don't want to do that. The only reason why they are doing this is because they are combating China. So if China today says that, you know what, I'm not going to invest another cent into infrastructure building anywhere around the globe. As soon as China says that, EU and US and all these different countries, they'll be like, okay, we're going to scratch our programs as well. So it's just a common sense that we should always keep China as the main partner because it's just more reliable. And as long as China is facilitating this kind of infrastructure deals, EU and US are sort of forced to also offer their own alternatives. And thirdly, I just want to say that Biden and von der Leyen, they're both making a big deal about Oh, private companies are involved in this. No one cares and no one wants your private companies to build our infrastructure deals. The thing about China is that they build the infrastructure and they give it to the government. That's what we want. What the Western countries want is that they want to build infrastructure and then they want to give that ownership to Western companies who will own that for the rest of time. That's not what we want. All of these things that are built should be given back to the local governments and they should be able to use that as the best way we can. It shouldn't become something that you make business out of. And they think that that's a winning line like, oh, the private companies are involved. In China, the private companies are not involved. That is a good thing. I hate to tell you, but the Chinese model is much better because private companies are not involved 
in that transaction. It's a government to government transaction. What you want to do is involve private companies and give all of the infrastructure that you build, the land and the end products to your companies so that they can benefit of us. And I think that that's something that should be totally rejected. If that's the model that they are proposing, we should reject it. But anyways, I think I've gone long enough. And if you like this video, please do remember to subscribe, like, share and comment.